Yes, thank you. Um, so uh, a good day to everybody. Um, I guess today we'll be, we've all been doing a lot of introductions, but I'll just introduce myself again. <laughs> so my name is Daniel Quay, and um, I'll be taking you through a Python tutorial today. Yes. Um, before we start the tutorial session, I want to quickly show you um, a PowerPoint about the, the instrument used to collect the, the data that we'll be working on. So I will quickly share my screen and then show you. Yes, hopefully everybody can um, see my screen, yeah. So um, the data we'll be working on, um, it's a, a data set collected by an Argo float. So Argo is like, um, it's, it's an international program. And what the, the focus of the program is, is to collect um, data on different properties within the ocean all around the world. So they use um, robotic instruments and I show the next slide now. So to the far right of your screen, it's what the instrument looks like. So that is um, an Argo float. So um, I was fortunate enough um, earlier this year, I helped deploy about three of these. So yeah, it was a really nice experience. And the, 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 the picture or the enlarged picture shows you how the floats goes about collecting the data. So the way it works is that you pre-program the, the float either on a vessel or on land. And then you take you, I mean, the, the float is placed on a, a vessel and then you take it somewhere in some part of the world. And then you deploy it or you drop it into the ocean. So that's what you do. And then, so as the, you, you can see from the diagram, so once the float is deployed, like I mentioned earlier, it's already pre-programmed to do to behave in a certain way when it's in the ocean. So it, it can descend deep. And then, so if you follow the animation here, so you deploy the float, that's one. And then you have to, the floats then descends to a certain depth, which has already been pre-programmed. And then at that particular depth, it can stay there drifting with the ocean currents for a number of days, and then drifts to its final depth. And then when it's um, ascending, to the ocean surface, it collects data. And so once it's at the surface, then it transmits the data. And then people like myself and you, today you'll be using the data, we can have access to the data and then we can use it. So um, I want to, yes, this is just a quick intro on the Argo float and how it collects the data. So we have profiles like this. So this is a temperature salinity profile shown in the in the diagram so this the kind of plots you can generate from this data just to see the vertical distribution of different properties within the ocean so at this point i'll just say a big thank you to my one of my lecturers um reina kiko he's the one that gave me access to the data we'll be using and he's directly working with this specific float yes so that's just a quick intro to the Argo float, yes. And so now I'll, we can go into our, our, our tutorial for today. I'll just interrupt. I just typed this in the chat. This is supposed to be an informal time. You can see we're a small group, which is kind of nice. Um, I hope this is okay, Daniel. Feel free to interrupt with questions at any time. And you can do that by unmuting yourself, although we ask that you stay muted if you're not asking a question. And uh, I'll also be monitoring the chat. So if you can't unmute or just have a quick question, you can type it there and I can answer as well. Thank you very much, yes. I, I don't I know if it is that. normal for everyone, but I'm getting error from Jupiter Hub. Jupiter Hub from the Hub, yeah. I don't know okay. if it's for everyone. Um, Maybe Daniel, if you want to get started, Babette, could you send 
me either a screenshot or the error message in the yes. chat or on Slack, and I can mm. help help you while while Daniel gets started. Okay, great. Yes, thank you, Paige. Yeah. So to avoid problems, um, I already loaded my, I already signed into the hub, and I've already loaded my notebook. Um, so what do we want to do in today's um, lab? So we want to analyze and visualize data from an algo float, like I, I mentioned earlier. And so this float, um, it, it has a nickname, it's, it's called Vinci Voyager 2. And um, two, because it, it, it was deployed together with another float. And it's been deployed in a South Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Angola. So this deployment happened in, 2021. Yes, so so in this lab, um, I'm going to go through or take you through how to load um, multiple files from the same folder. So if you are, you are, you, are, you have a data set that is not already compiled into one complete um, data, and you have it in say maybe it is you have different files within the same folder. Um, we want to see how best to load in all that data and manipulate that data and visualize it for me in data, in all that data together as a whole, uh -huh, rather than as individual files. So we do that, we, we load the data, we extract the data. And in extracting the data, we are going to be making use of um, a for loop and then conditional statements. And then once we have our data, we are going to plot on a map. We try to see how to add different features to the map and yeah, improve the, the plot to visualize some specific variables. And throughout the notebook, um, I try to include um, a few um, challenges or a few lessons for you to try on your own, just to improve your, your programming skills. So we start. So, before we do anything, we analyze any data, do anything with, in programming, usually we are working with packages or, or modules. And so usually recommended that when you start the, the, your script or your notebook, you load in the packages that um, you're going to need. And so this is what I try to do here. So in the first cell, I, I load all the packages that we are we will need and it's always good especially for if you are a beginner it's good that you write what we call comments in your notebooks or in your scripts because um i mean you want to still be able to know what you did like maybe a year or two after you've used a particular notebook you still want to it, it's likely you might not remember everything you did or what you use different um code lines for so you always comment, you always write um, some short text to explain what you are doing. And so I load the packages now. And within the same line of each package name, I try to explain what the different packages do. And so that's what you see in a first cell. So we have a um, path lib, we have OS, we have blob, we have matplotlib, we have cartopy, and we have um, numpy and pandas. So we'll be using all this. Um, packages throughout the, the notebook. And we don't really use this next cell, but I just thought to in, include it because, especially for those that might want to download the, the notebook to their local desktops. This will be very helpful for you to know ex your exact working directory, and then you can make um, appropriate changes, and then you can run the next cells without having problems because if you don't use i mean if you just download this notebook that we are going through now and you try to run it on your local computer most likely you might have problems loading in the data because the, the file paths changed yes so using this allows you to see exactly where your home directory is or where you are you are currently your work, current working directory and yes so so we try to load some data. So the data is already on the hub. It's already, it's already been uploaded on the hub. So what 
I do here is to define a path to the files, to the files that we are going to obtain the extract the data from. So first I provide a variable name and I supply the path to the files to this variable, this variable called file path. And then you see os.chdir. So that is, so go into the operating system, change directory. So that's basically what we are doing. We want to change directly into the folder where we have the files. And then we can easily call out these files. And to load the files, we use another package called Glob. And Glob allows you to, it allows you to, um, to retrieve files, okay, based on a particular criteria. So in the in our data folder, all our files are CSV files. So they have the extension .csv. And so that is why we 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 provide an argument to the glob function that it should um, take all the files with an extension .csv and give it to this variable file name list. So we want to generate a list of file names. And so I run this cell. And then you have a list of all the files that are in our data folder. So I, I, I guess, yeah, the names are a bit weird, but these are all the files that we have in the data folder. There are about 23 files. And as Paige said, I mean, you can interrupt. Um, yeah, this is meant to be like, um, um, it's not meant. It's meant to be more like a, a conversation for it to be more interactive. Yes. Yeah, so anybody can interact if you do not understand any cell or any code line that I'm running. And so, good to know we've been able to load in our file names. So now we want to extract some data and start working on the the data. But um, prior to extracting the data, we want to create um, an empty list or we want to create a storage where we are going to store the data be before we start working on it. First to extract the data. I mean, if we extract it, we need to keep it somewhere. And then once we, we, we've extracted everything we need, we kept it somewhere, then we can work on it from wherever it is that we stored it. So we want to first extract the latitude and longitude um, information from the different data files. So especially for an algo float, usually are calling these data files and profiles. So for every profile, there's a single file for every profile. So we have 23 profiles we are working on, so 23 files. And so like I showed in the short PowerPoint, anytime the float comes to the surface of the ocean, it transmits data. So this position data that we want to, or this latitude and longitude data we want to extract is, um, in reference to the different points at which or the different locations where the floats came to the surface of the ocean to transmit data. So I run this next cell where we are creating the empty list to store the, the data we want to extract. And now I want to extract the data from the different profiles or from the different files. So here we are going to use, um, we're going to make use of for loop and conditional statements. So um, hopefully most of us were part of the pre-workshop because I think we had a, a brief, and we saw this briefly in the pre-workshop, one of the pre-workshops, yes. So this is the loop we are using to extract our file. So what this loop is doing is that so, I mean, this is the other nice thing about them um, writing code so you can, it, you can actually write your code in like in plain language. Uh -huh. You write it in a way that it's easy for you to understand. So that's what I, I try to do here. So in the previous cells, we created a list of file names. So this first line of code says that for a file name in a file name list, so for every file in a file name list, the code should print working on this file. And then it should add, after I print working on this file, it should add the file name to it. Yeah, we are only adding this to help us um, track the different files that um, we are working on. Or, or I felt it would be good to have this kind of, um, of, of, of scripting because yeah, it also makes the code easy. So we, we tell the code that, okay, so 
for every 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 file in this file name list that we already have you want to open the file and once you open a file we want the we want to do and then we want to take a, a number of actions within this specific file close the file and then open a different file perform the same action on the next file that we are opening so we are we are done with all the actions we need to perform and to do this um so the loop so we are going we are so let's say we have a list of files and then we take one file do something to it we move into the next file do something to it we move into the next do something to it so that's what the loop is about so this counter we have here um is to help us is to help the code be able to know when to jump out of um, a particular file and move into a different file so so the the path of for each file is provided you open a file and you set a counter or you set a variable which i call counter to zero and you say that okay when the code goes into this file for every line in the file the code should um, it should split the line so this um files that we are working on they are i mean the extension is csv comma separated files but actually the 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 files or the the data in the in the different files are tab separated and so we use um this um in backward slash t to tell the, the to tell python that okay we are working with tab delimited files or tab separated um tab separated files yes so it's not it's not separated the, it's not sep the content of the files are not separated by commas but rather by tabs and what else do we see in this um this um loop we also provide the the index for the the different the index for the different variables so there's a variable there's a variable for longitude a variable for latitude and i've just shortened latitude and longitude as um, lat and long and they, they are in the index positions two and three and so we say that so in in subsetting this um information for this variable lat and long so what we say that if the latitude and and or longitude um, information is not equal to na then the the code should convert or python should convert this particular value to a float so already if you go into the the file you see that missing values and this is usually common if you are dealing with observational data you you it's most likely you are going to have um, data that has missing values is 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 very common i mean so we have to account for the missing values otherwise it will be difficult to generate plots with the with the information that we extract so we say that um, if the latitude um, value or or the value and the values under the variable latitude are not equal to na the python should convert that particular value to a float and append that value to the list we created here which is where we are storing our um, the info the lat information that we are extracting. So we want to store it in this this um, empty list lat list. So that's what this is what we try to do. So Python goes into the file, and then so the, the, the files are written in lines. Okay, and for each and every line, it goes through the the the, the each line and then sees that okay when as soon as it gets to under the the column lat it takes the value checks if the value is, is a, a real value or a missing value if it's a real value it converts it into a float and then it sends it up to the the latitude the empty latitude list and so i'll quickly run this cell yeah i've been talking a lot about this cell <laughs> because it's it's going to serve as the basis for the other um runs that we are going to make and so after running this you, you have a long you have a long printout but what i want us to focus on is um just this i'm i'm highlighting the first um 
the first line. So it says working on this file and it prints out the name of the first, um, the first file in the file name list, which is what we asked it to do when we wrote the for loop here. And so this is the exact response we, we get. So we now know that the first file is this file with this name. And in the code, you also see that I say, right after setting the counter to zero, the code reads for line in data file, line equals line dot strip. If counter equals, equals zero, print the line. So this is the line. So this long information that you see here where you have a um, pressure decibel, you have date. Let me try and highlight just uh, just a few of those, just so that it's clear. We have the pattern number, the face name. So this is the, the header of the file. So that's the first, the first line, okay? So that's the header of the file that it has printed because that's what we told it to, we told Python to do in the, in the for loop that we described. So in summary, this printout is the, is information on the name of the file and then the, the header, the headers in the different columns. So this is all that um, Python prints for us because that's what we asked it to do. And so, yeah, it's quite long, but <laughs> that's what we asked it to do. So that's the printout it gives us. Yeah. And then after that long printout, we want to see exactly the, the information now that we want to work with. So our aim for writing that long um, for loop was to get information on latitude and longitude for the float. And so I print this cell now. And so it gives you, this is the end of, so this is a, a list of um, latitude values. And this second highlight is a, sorry, it's a list of longitude values. Uh -huh. So now we, we have information on the float anytime a, a, a ascended to the ocean surface to transmit data. So we now know the different um, positions where it came to the ocean surface to transmit this data. Um, unfortunately, this is not like, I mean, it's not, we see it, but I, I think we cannot really relate to it. Yeah, so how about we, we show this different positions on a map? So that's what um, we do next. So it's time for us to do some plots. <laughs> yeah. So first in doing the plot, um, so we are using, we are going to be using the package um, matplotlib and cartopy to do, to plot um, on a map. The, the, the map, um, the aspects of map really come from the, the cartopy package and then the plotting to like to produce line plots or scatter plots or whatever. You get it from matplotlib. So first, what we do is to define a figure size. You can always define your own um, figure size depending on how you want your outputs to, to show. Yeah. And so we define a, a figure size and then we create an axis. And this axis, we want to define this axis by a certain map projection. And there are different map projections. I think throughout the course of the, the week, um, other notebooks, other Python notebooks will be uploaded. There's this specific um, Python notebook that talks about the map projections and how to even create your own projection if you are interested in doing that. So here we are using the projection plate carry and we're using this, this projection to create the axis. And when we create this axis, we want to add coastlines to the axis. So we want, the, the, we want Python to draw coastlines for us. And this um, stock image, this um, line of code, what it does is, is it's the, the line of code that kind of shades the ocean. I mean, provides this ocean where we see something like uh, showing, yeah, and provides the, the features on the land. Yeah, so it's this this line of code that helps us to make the, the, the map. Yeah, that gives us a nice map. Yeah, and then once we've defined the, our map and the various features we want to have in the map, then we go ahead to plot 
um, the, the positional data that we've already extracted above. And so let me run this cell. Okay, yes. So we've generated our first um, map. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Yes, um, but we still cannot really see anything. Um, I mean, we see, we see some red dots somewhere getting close to the south of Africa. I think this should be, I mean, I'm already familiar with the data, so I know this is off the coast of Angola, like I mentioned earlier in the, in the notebook. Uh -huh. But we cannot really see, see much. So in order to see exactly the different um, position, um, we can zoom into the, the map. And we do this by limiting the extent of the map. Um, right now, we are seeing the, the whole world on a, on a small, on a small, small map or on a 2D plane. Yes, but now we want to just zoom into a specific area so that within this um, specific area, we can better see the points that we plotted. And so that is what we do in our next cell. And so we do this by, by limiting the extent, like I mentioned, we limit the extent of the, the map. And so it's the same, so like, um, this first half of the code is similar to what we had in a previous cell because we want to generate the same kind of information. And so these are the new lines of code that we add. So the, we use this code line to set the extent of the, of the map. So we define the, where the, how far west the map should be, how far east, how far south, and how far north of the map. So this, 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 these are the, the values. So 10.5 corresponds to west um, and 14 to east, south, negative because it's down. No, I think it should have been east. east. Sorry, they should both, I think they should both be east. Yes, yeah, 10.5 is, it should both be east, east. But usually you are using, so west not, in this, so is the, is the west part of the map, yes. The west part of the map is um, the west part of the map is longitude than um, ten point five, and uh, yeah, to the far the east part of the map is fourteen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the last line of code we add um, grid lines to the the map. In the previous map, um, we didn't show any grid lines, so we add grid lines to the map. And this is the output um, it produces. Um, probably if you run the code for the first time, I think it will try to download um, some map features. Yeah, that's why previously I had that, um, that red kind of um, cell up here. Yeah, but now that I'm running the, the I'm running the notebook again. Yeah, it's no more showing it because it has already downloaded those files. So now we see clearly the, the different points or the different locations where the float um, came to the surface of the ocean to transmit data. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> so next, um, now that we know where the, 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 the different locations where the float was coming up, um, we still do not know in what direction that the float is moving. I mean, like we saw in the PowerPoint, the short brief PowerPoint intro, we see that um, when the, the float is, is inside the, the ocean, it, it moves around with the ocean current. So next we want to look, we want to see the general direction in which the float is moving. And in this cell, what we try to do is, um, we try to subset the element so in the list, last list, we want to subset the first element, which is index position zero. And we do the same for the long list or the list of longitude values. And we assign this to start lat and start long as variables. And once we've done this, we go on to produce um, another map yes this time around with a little bit of um, improvement so 
let me quickly go ahead and run this cell. Okay. Okay. Ah, and there we have it. So, um, so, so from this map we see we see the first um, at the first point when the location when the float sorry came to the ocean surface. So that point has the the marker red, and the other the other points are are blue. So we see that um, the float is 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 from its point of deployment is moving in a southwestward direction, and so that's the kind of information we can. Um, visualize. I mean, if you wanted, to, if you want to know in what direction the the, the float is 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 going, yeah. So that's what this cell does. Yes, and now we have our first um, practice. And um, yeah, this is not meant to be like a uh, too difficult. <laughs> so um, what I would want us to do, I mean after the the lab is done and we want to we want to try the go through a notebook on our on our own you could try adding a few cells and um, producing the same map but change the the color for the color for the start position and then the other positions and i show so in this link so there's a in the text in the cell below practice challenge, um, at the end of the writing, at the end of the text, the, the, there is a link. So if you click on colors at the end of the, the, the cell, it, it should take you to a link where you see um, a list of color names. So Python or Matplotlib has, a, the Matplot library has a lot of colors. So you could choose um, any colors you want, and then you can try to copy the same, Copy and paste the cell, this cell, this particular cell, and then you change the colors by changing the argument color, which is here. Yes. And so once you change that, it should give you a new map with, uh, with different colors here, yeah, depending on um, what you choose here. Yeah. Uh, and now <laughs> want to dive into the ocean. Now we know, now, now, now that we know. In what direction the the float is moving? We know when um, at the different locations is coming to the surface. But how deep is the float descending? So when it descends, how deep does um, the how deep does how deep is each descent before it, it, it ascends to the surface? So that is what we want to we want to have a look at next. And in this, to be able to generate such a plot, you need to know the, the maximum descent depth. So we create a, an empty list in this cell where, and we call that list, we call it max depth list. So maximum depth, depth that um, the float descends to. And once again, I'm going to make use uh, of a for loop to obtain the different um, depths at which the, the floats reach. So the, I would say the main difference between this, um, this for loop and the previous one we use is that now we, we have um, two empty lists. So in the previous um, for loop, if you would remember, the empty list that we created or the storage space that we created where we're going to save our extracted data was outside the loop because it was our final final storage space kind of but this time around we want to create um, a storage space within the loop because whatever data we extract we want to we want to work on the data we want to carry out a certain manipulation or computation on that particular data so we want to have this this data within the loop we carry out the manipulation and then the final result or solution we have, then we send that final result outside the loop to the empty list, which here is denoted as max depth list. So in the same way, we first call out each file in the file name list to be sure which file we are working on, we print working on this file. And then we add the file name at the end. And then we provide the path to the file 
and then we open the file in a we, we open the file yes and we we, we open the file kind of like temporarily and python stores this um, open file in memory and then we go ahead to create our, uh, an our first empty list which we call a depth list so we want to extract for each and every profile we want to extract the different depth values and put it inside this um this uh this empty list yeah and in the same in the same way we use a counter to move through the different lines so python will go through each line like we've already seen and take a certain value throw it into or send that value to this empty depth list and then lastly we want to carry out a certain computation on this um on this this depth list so that's what we try to do here so we do um max depth and then we call our next package which is numpy so numpy is used for numerical like uh, manipulations or computations so we want to we want python to find from this depth list that has just been created for a particular file we want python to find the maximum um, value and when python finds this maximum value it should um, assign this maximum value to a new variable called max depth and then we append this um, max depth value to the list outside the loop which is the max depth list and then we close the the, the file so we close the file so that we can move into a next file so here Already in the loop, we, we say, like you can see, we, we tell um, Python, we tell the code to print the name of the file. Each time it works on a particular file, it should print the name it's working on. And then when it's done and moves onto the next file, it should also print the name just so that we have, it's kind of like a checks and balance something. So yeah, see where you are. Yeah, because sometimes you can get lost if you're writing long, long lines of code. So Python first worked on this first file moved on to the next, move on to the next, move on to the next, till it got to the, the end of the files. So now we have, um, we have um, a list of maximum depth values. So anytime the floats descended deep into the ocean, the maximum depth in which we now have the value, yes. And so I'll print this cell. Oh, sorry. Um, I think I didn't run this. Okay, so I, I, I didn't run the earlier, earlier cells here, so this can also happen sometimes. Yeah, so this is the list of, um, for each and every descent, every float descent, this is the maximum depth as which the floats reached, yeah. And now we want to visualize this on a map. And yeah, so that is what we have here next yeah okay okay so <clears throat> we want to we want to display or we want to visualize the trajectory of the float in which direction is moving and then also to show um anytime the float came to the ocean surface we want to see how deep it had already been prior to coming to the surface so so this is also like um, a large chunk of this code, like this part is, is similar to what we've already been using in the previous cells to generate our maps. So these are the new, this I think is the new, is the new lines that we add. So we want to add a color bar to show um, the different maximum depth values. And so let me quickly run this cell. Okay, so this is what, what, what we see. So we see that um, for most part, I think um, the float was, I mean, it, it wasn't, I mean, it was going deep, but it was mainly around between probably 1,400 decibars. And yeah, but, but at some point it went as deep as probably maybe 2,000. Let me look, let me see from the values. Uh, Uh, 
everybody. And so we have one, four here. Ah, okay, yes, yes, yes. So yeah, my prediction was kind of right. So it, it, this is close to um, 2,000. Um, this is close to a depth of 2,000 meters or more than two, close to, yeah, close to 2,000 meters. So at some point, the, the, the float went that deep, yeah. And <clears throat> next, we want to try to, I mean, improve the appearance of the plot. I mean, we already see this, but we want to add a few features to make the plot more um, easy on the eye. <laughs> so let me run the next cell. Yes. So between the two plots or the two maps, what we've added is to set sets the, the background color for the for the the plot. So here you see that it's um, it's white, but here we provide a color for the background. And this is the line of code that actually does that for us. And also I changed the the color the color map being used for the the color map being used to distinguish the different maximum depth value so here python or uh, python yes python provided um, a default color map for us but here we try we, we change it and this is the line of code that actually does it so this particular color map is called winter and so adding underscore and r what it does is to reverse the color so if you if you just plotted winter it will have um, the lower maximum depth values rather being represented by the color blue. But if you reverse the color, then it turns it upside, upside down. Yeah, so yeah, this is just to improve the, the appearance of the plot. And so this is what we, what we show here. Um, once again, um, if um, anybody has any question, you can always um, interrupt and ask your question. Yeah. So if we quickly run up to up here, I mean, the first time we printed the, the files and the headers or the column names, you already see the different variables, the floats collected information on. So I, I let me just highlight this. So this is, so pressure, the, that's information on pressure. Just, so that's what, what we use to determine the depth. And it has the um, longitude and latitude values. And then when you when you come here, so it collected information on temperature, salinity. There are a lot of variables. Um, those the ones that I think um, we can easily work with. There are different like these ones are talking about like particles that it collected or particles it collected data on within the ocean column. But I think the ones that we can easily work on are something like chlorophyll, something like um, temperature, salinity, dissolved oxygen. And so that is what we'll focus on in the coming cells or in the coming part, yeah, in the coming cells, yeah. So we, I select the variable <coughs> chlorophyll for us to, to analyze or for us to focus on. So the, the flows has collected, um, Total values, I mean, throughout the column of the, the ocean. I mean, the part of the ocean where the, the, the ocean work, the float was at a certain time. But what we want to do now is to just see what the, to, to visualize the, the, the mean chlorophyll value in the surface, surface of the, the ocean. So we, we will define the ocean surface as depths between from just zero to 100 meters or 100 um, decibels which is the unit for the depth oh, yeah so once again we want to extract data so we create a storage unit for the data when we extract the data where do we keep the data so i call this um, storage unit mean surface chlorophyll a list so an empty list where we are going to keep the mean um the average of the, 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 the chlorophyll A in the surface water. So once again, we use a for loop, and this is also similar to, 
to the loops we've been using in the previous um, cells. So yeah, nothing much changes here. The, 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 the main change is, is here. It's here where we define a condition to help us extract the um, chlorophyll values for um, that are related to the, the, the surface of the ocean or values that are only um, related to the, or collected from the from depth, depth range of zero to 100 meters. So we use this, this condition to limit the chlorophyll values that we are going to work on. So we say that if the depth is less than or equal to 100, Python should um, append that particular chlorophyll value to a certain surface chlorophyll list, which we've created in the loop here. Yeah. And so that's what we do. And then just like in a previous um, cell or in a previous computation, where we're finding the maximum depth this time around, we want to find the mean of all the chlorophyll values in the, in the list, in the list surface chlorophyll A list, yeah. And once again, we use the, the NumPy library, like I mentioned, it's, you use it for um, numerical computation. Yeah, and calling this um, particular function within the library allows you to confuse the mean whilst also accounting for the missing values. Because usually if you just compute, compute a raw mean of um, values with, with, with missing values, you're going to have a mean of like any, you know, which any is what we usually um, we describe, missing values with any. So that's what you're going to have. So if you, you use this particular function within the NumPy library, then you can, you can compute the mean, accounting for missing values also. And so now we want to preview the mean um, chlorophyll A, surface chlorophyll A is okay. Okay, so so here I just wanted to show um, show one of the the list and to demonstrate that that indeed we really have. Um, uh, missing values and so Python describes them as, as NA and which is not a number. Yeah, and we need to deal with this. So, I mean, it's a, the, the, the values, it's a lot of values. And so we just use this to just show the first seven um, elements in the list. And so that's why we have this. And now this is our focus, which is the, the mean um, surface chlorophyll A that we want to work with or we want to visualize on the on the map. So this is our main um, data set or mini data set of interest. And so we have um, a range of chlorophyll A values. Yeah. And now we want to plot this on a, on a map to see um, at this each, each point in time, what was the, the mean chlorophyll concentration in the ocean surface that the float had collected information on? Yes. So this cell was also, I mean, similar to the, <laughs> to the other cells we used to produce our maps. So we define a figure size, we create a certain axis with a map projection, we plot our points, and then we scale these points, this, points by the mean um, chlorophyll A concentration that we have calculated. And then that is what we, that's what, that's what we've done here. And then we apply a certain color map to it. And so you beautifully see the, the chlorophyll A, the discrete chlorophyll A, um, mean, I mean, mean surface chlorophyll A at each point where the, the float collected information or along here at a certain position. Yeah, so that's what we visualize on this map. So we are still off the coast of Angola where the float, I mean, generated some profiles. And so that's where, where we see. And then <laughs> we have a, a, a next challenge. 
the, I mean, the first in the first challenge we work with them, um, work on colors. This time I want to work with color maps. So color maps it, it mainly shows like a gradient of, of, of a color from changing from one, one um, um, color to the other kind of. And also you can find the, a list of color maps or names of color maps you can supply to your different codes to generate nice plots. You can find them in this link. So the link is already attached. And like I mentioned, the data has um, different um, variables, okay? And though we worked on chlorophyll, you can also work on temperature or salinity. And the index for temperature is nine and the index for say salinity is 10. So to use that, you have to change the values here in this for loop. The index for chlorophyll A was 17, but if you want to work with say temperature, you want to work with mean surface temperature, you want to change this to nine. And if it's mean surface salinity, you want to change this to 10, yes. So that is the next challenge. And we are almost at the end. Um, so we try to also link um, the different labs to each other so that the, 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 the labs are connected. I mean, so that you are not learning things in a disjointed manner. So it's more holistic. So if um, you are interested on, in working on just maybe one profile or just one, one file within all the, the files, this is some extra content and I provide them. I thought this will be quite important because I realized that opening the files. So if you try to open this file, it is, you need to provide certain um, arguments to be able to successfully open it. Otherwise you get errors. That's why I decided to include, include this, this extra content. Um, I must mention that they will have, we have so in the hub and another notebook is going to be uploaded. And in this notebook, it talks about, I think, um, I mean, you generate some line plots. So these files that you, this CSV files that we are working with now, you can also generate the same plots with this, this we, we, you can perform the same um, analysis on these files too. So I thought I'll provide this extra content so that in case somebody was interested in, in combining the different things they are learning, the different notebooks, yeah, this might be useful. So you can open a single file by just assigning, by defining the, the, the file name. So you can define the file name here, which is what we do in this cell. So we call this particular file, this specific file, we call, we assign this file to the variable data file and you see it prints and we print out the name just to be sure we are having um, a correct um, file name yeah and this this is what um, a friend of mine will call hard coding and so this is more like a, the soft coded version and so like if you remember in the earlier part of the notebook we had already defined um, the names of the files we've already loaded all the file names into a certain list called file name list. So if you wanted the first file, the first file is, is in index position zero, and you can just call out that first file by just providing an index to this file name list. I run this and you see that it gives you the same file name here. So yeah, this is a more like a soft coded way to go about it. And now we want to open the, the file. To open this file, we need to provide a file path. And we are going to open the file with pandas. So that's another library or module that we, we, we use. So already we've already imported pandas as PD. So we I provide a file path in this cell. And then next, I try to read the file and assign this. I mean, when I open a file, I assign it to a variable called profile one because as I mentioned, um, all the files are profiles generated from the float. So this is the first profile we are working on. And yes, this is this is what I was referring to. I found that if you try to open this um, this file, um, anywhere you you try to in any program and you try you don't provide this encoding, 
yeah, then the file is, is, is not going to open properly. It's probably going to open with an error. It will not open properly. So that's why you need this, um, this encoding argument. So it loads in nicely. And yes, we try to preview the, the file. So this, this looks more like a, a nice um, um, representation of the file. Yeah, because here you see, you nicely see the different columns and um, you see the, the, the values recorded or the, the values for each variable or each column. Yeah. And I must say that there, there are the, the, the column names or the variables within the file is quite long. And so the Python only prints up to this point, up to the temperature var variable, puts in this three and then continues with the rest. So if you want to see all the all the variable names within the, the, the file, you can use this line of code. So we say that for every column in this profile, in this file called profile one, prints the column name. So Python prints everything for us. And from here, you can see all the different um, variables or columns within the file, yeah. And the next cell is just another way to print the same, um, to print the same information, which is the same, um, um, yeah, the same information as the list, the previous the previous cell, sorry. Yeah, and I use, um, when you use this, I mean, anytime you call out a certain variable and you, you add a semicolon to the end of the variable name, then it's not going to print, I mean, it's going to load, but it's not going to print the content of the variable. So if, if I remove the semicolon, yeah, then it will print like a really long, um, a list with a really long, yeah, a really long list, yeah, with a lot of um, values. So you see the different elements in the, in the, in this particular file, yeah. So I'll just go back. Ah, and wow, <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are at the end now. <laughs> Yeah, so um, good job. And um, so this is the end. And I mean, if there's anything I've learned with, with programming, you constantly need to be practicing. You constantly, if you really want to improve your programming skills, you constantly have to be to be practicing. So at this point, we are at the end of the the tutorial or the lab. And if anybody has a question, you can open your mic. And yeah, go ahead and ask a question. Yeah. Yes, uh, I would like just to thank you so much for this presentation. Sure. Uh, I would like just to know uh, for how long this uh, Jupyter Hub will be accessed to, to us. This is for I, yeah, I think that's my, something I can answer. Um, great question. So this hub will be open for a few weeks. So you'll be able to work on it. Um, you, you also, anyone who's participated in this school um, in coessing uh, will be able to uh, access a hub that is maintained continually called the Pangeo hub. Uh, and there are instructions, you will, it will be a different link. So you will have to um, apply to get access um, to a different hub. And I will provide instructions on how to do that. Um, so it will be almost identical to what you see here, uh, but for a few changes. So at the end of the week, I will probably record something that um, you can watch on your own time at the end after the school. And okay. that will have information of how to access that hub. So okay. if you want to just do the, the examples that are on here, that will be for several weeks. If you'd like to continue using the hub for your own research um, or, or anything like that, uh, that would be great. And you'll have to migrate to a different hub and I can walk anyone through that yes. process. Yes, please. I'm interested, please, because- um, Yeah, great. Yeah, and we're using it also, almost the same thing like that in Ghana in October. 
So it will be great for me to have it in order to, because I think it's very good, you know, you don't have to, you, you don't need to have Python. You don't need to download data in your computer. It is so great for for people that you want that uh, when you want to do the training. So, thank you so much. It will be great. Yes, definitely. Um, feel free to email me, and we can we can discuss. Okay. Um, but great. yeah, it is it is really really handy for these kind yeah. of workshops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Paige, and thank you so much, Daniel. It was great. Yeah. Sure. Sure. You're welcome. So bye bye. <laughs> okay then. See you later in a week. Yeah, wait. Okay. Ulrich and, has a question uh, in the chat. Uh, so I think. Ah, okay. Yep. Okay. You want to answer this? <laughs> okay. So um, uh, let me just have a. Let me share my screen. Run the cell and go back. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> so you know, th th that's what I was kind of trying to explain in this particular cell. So yes, I would, um, what I would do is I would, um, I think the, the file you have is not updated. Yes, I was, I, what I'll do, I'll try to send this update. But if you want to do it now, let me let me just look at this again. Where are you? Yeah, it's the path file path. Yeah, so so quickly clean clean. Um, I mean, um, who asked? I think let, let me stop sharing so I can I can see my my I can see the chat well so I know. Yes, so you should um, in the cell. You should clean. Um, you should clean from from. You should clean the downloads. Daniel BCG Argo, and only starts from the forward slash coercing twenty twenty two. Um, Alrich, I don't know if if you you follow what I'm saying. So um, okay, I think I can show it from the notebook rather. <laughs> Okay, so let me show you from here. So if if you get to this cell, so you can compare it to what I have here. Um, so I want you to so in your in your cell you have Daniel and then BCG Argo and some other other information. I want you to clear all that up to this point and that should fix that should fix it all rich hello page I, I hope you had um yeah i i, I hope you had you, you you were able to hear what I, yes yes yeah. and it's just uh, to change the path <laughs> yes so ulric is trying he said he's trying right now so ah, okay Okay. Ah, I need to see the chat alongside. Ah, okay. It's very hard to yeah. see the chat while you're sharing a screen. <laughs> it, should, it, should, it should fix it. Uh -huh. So also if you download, I mean now that page is talking about um, running and um, notebooks on the on another hub, probably a lot of people might not need to download the their notebooks and run on their local PCs. But if if you happen to do that, you should when you run this cell, when this cell, what it shows you is to show you your current working directory. So you're going to use, ah, okay, yes, okay, okay, good to know. Good, but I'll, I'll, I'll update the, the notebook. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. I'll update it, yes. Good, yeah. So if you download, like I was saying, if you happen to download this um, to your local PC, then you have to change the, the path, the, the path to the folders. Otherwise, you are going to have an error. Yes. So that should fix it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, if there are any more questions.
yeah, the, uh, uh, the recording will be shared. And yes, even if you missed, yeah, the recording will be shared. Yeah, it will be pasted on the YouTube channel. Yes, uh -huh, yeah. And you can always ask questions in the Slack Python channel. And yes, we'll be happy to help. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah so no worries if you missed, you, you missed, yeah. We also have more sessions, I mean, tomorrow, yeah, page